Good morning and welcome to this episode of our Digital Devos here at Focus Church. My name is Carla Gerard and I'm so glad to be with you all this morning. Uh, last Sunday was really powerful for me as we talked about absolute power in prayer. We've been joining together every morning at 8 a.m. praying for boldness, unity, asking the Lord to teach us how to pray, and then now adding to this prayer that we would be full of the power that Christ died for us to have. Um, it says in Romans, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Romans 8, we're going to be there this morning. And in verse 31, I'll start, says this, Paul is speaking. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Our study guide points out these uh, promises and truths to us from this passage that God raised Jesus from the dead and in doing so broke the power of death over all who were saved according to his name. All who are in Christ have been saved and set free from the power of sin and the grave in this life and in the next. I'm reminded of the passage in Romans that I use for my two-minute miracle when I'm sharing just a quick evangelism moment with somebody, and that is this, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I have a debt that I owe that I could never pay, that Christ paid for me, and because of His blood shed for me, I am set free. I surrender my life to Him and recognize Him as Savior and Lord. The study guide goes on to say this, Even greater, the power that saved us, the same power that has given us freedom and victory over death, has seated Christ at the right hand of the Father in His eternal glory and majesty. So Paul asked this question in verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? So what are these things that he's talking about? If you back up in Romans 8, he is talking about our freedom in Christ, that we don't have any condemnation if we're found in Christ because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus set us free from the law of sin and death. And then starting in verse 18, he begins to address sufferings. And down in verse 26, he's talking about our weakness. So these things that would plague us and try to discourage us. And you know, for me in my life, I have to say that discouragement has been a constant companion of mine. It's, it's a daily thing for me to battle discouragement and for me to remind myself who I am in Christ. So here in this passage, when Paul says, what then shall we say to these things, these sufferings, these discouragements, these weaknesses? And he answers it in verse 38, which I already read, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. But I want to go to verse 37 as well. In addition to what's in our study guide, Paul says this, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. My commentary says this, Paul answers the question he raised in verse 35 with absolute certainty that nothing can ever sever God's people from his love in Christ. I find that to be comforting today. Our study guide goes on to say this, because Christ has been raised from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father, we too have been seated with him. The power that raised Christ from the dead has given eternal security to those who are in Christ. How secure do you feel today? Because the security that Paul is talking about is really more for our eternal hope that in eternity, that forever, those who are in Christ will never be separated. But it can be applied to our daily life. When you're feeling frustrated, you're coming up against something that seems to trip you up over and over again, you're going through pain or loss, you're struggling through something that maybe you thought you'd never walk in, or maybe you're struggling through something that you've walked yourself into over and over and over. But there is the truth that if you're in Christ, as we said, maybe I said last week or the week before, the scripture in Galatians reminds us that Christ is in me. I am in Christ. Christ is in God. It's like we're surrounded and wrapped up in that truth. Our identity is in Christ. You can rest assured no matter what you're struggling through today that there's hope for eternity. There's security for eternity for those who are in Christ. And there's hope for today. 
So our response questions this week, when I was reading through the study guide, I wanted to challenge us with those this morning out loud. How does the resurrection power of Christ give you confidence in your eternal hope to come? What do you dwell on? Do you think more about the earthly struggles or the earthly blessings even more than you do heaven? Because the promise to those who believe, the hope, the security is truly found in our eternity. And then secondly, how does that confidence empower you to be a witness in this life? So as we preach the gospel to ourselves every day, reminding ourselves that without God, we are depraved, we are prone to wander, we will always fall short, we will never choose unity, we will always choose ourself, everything opposite of Christ. That's why we choose to to preach the gospel to ourselves every day. But in addition to that, I want to encourage us today that we remind ourselves of who we are in Christ. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we are valuable, intended, seen. We can be bold. We can be unified. We can choose others. And we can operate in more power than we even realize. I'll end this uh, Devo with this today. We must be reminded that our hope is not in this world. And there is a far greater reward to come to those who are in Christ. So as we live in confidence and expectation of the resurrection power of Christ, let us live boldly as empowered witnesses of this resurrection power. So go out and do that today. Share Jesus with someone. Live Jesus in front of someone. Share Jesus with those in your home or live Jesus in front of those in your home. That's about the hardest place sometimes to disciple or to be a witness of the goodness of God. I just pray for you and me today that we will find ourselves secure in Christ, knowing who he says that we are and trusting in his goodness in his power and his truth. Thank you for joining us this morning. We continue to encourage you to connect at any point during the week and all of our social media platforms during this time of physical distance and social responsibility. We love you. We miss you. We'll see you real soon.